We just saw that water adds to carbonyl groups to give hydrates, and when we replace one of the hydrogens of water with an R group to give an alcohol, a similar nucleophilic addition process takes place. We end up now with an alkoxy group linked to the carbonyl carbon rather than a hydroxy group. And just as in the case of water, a hydrogen adds to the carbonyl oxygen as well. So this is an addition process, and it's a nucleophilic addition since the reagent alcohol is acting as a nucleophile toward the carbonyl group. This gives rise to an intermediate called a hemiacetal. This product on the right-hand side is a hemiacetal, and the hallmark of a hemiacetal as a functional group really has to do with this central carbon being linked to two oxygen atoms, specifically a hydroxyl group, an OH group, and an OR group. This is the hallmark of a hemiacetal. When the hydroxyl group is replaced with a second alkoxy group, that's an acetal, and we'll see acetals in the next video. Hemiacetals are called as much because they can react further to form acetals. And these appear frequently in biochemical settings. I won't spoil it just yet, but we'll see a very large number of hemiacetals in a particular unit later in the course. Just like the addition of water, this reaction is reversible. In the reverse direction, the reaction amounts to the elimination of the alcohol from the hemiacetal. To deal with that and get a useful amount of the product hemiacetal out of this, we have to drive the reaction forward by taking advantage of Le Chatelier's principle. And we do this, for example, by using solvent alcohol, large excess of a reactant to push the reaction forward. And if we want to go all the way to the acetal, we'll also use the removal of water, since that reaction, as we'll see in the next video, releases a molecule of water. The mechanism of this reaction begins like all acid-catalyzed mechanisms involving the carbonyl group with protonation of the electrophilic group, specifically protonation of the most basic atom in the carbonyl group, the carbonyl oxygen. The resulting protonated carbonyl intermediate is strongly electrophilic at the carbonyl carbon as a result of protonation, and ultimately that protonation thus has facilitated nucleophilic addition of the alcohol oxygen to the carbonyl carbon. After nucleophilic addition to the polarized pi bond, we end up with an intermediate that is essentially a protonated hemiacetal. We're almost to the product, we just have an extra proton on this intermediate. Back in the first step, we generated water, the conjugate base of the acid catalyst, and now to regenerate the catalyst and generate the neutral product, a proton is transferred from the protonated intermediate back to that conjugate base. So here we see that classic acid catalysis pattern with a proton on the business or something happening, nucleophilic addition across a polarized pi bond, followed by proton off. This generates the neutral product. I'll go ahead and redraw it down here. And at the same time, regenerates the acid catalyst, H3O+. This structure we've created is a hemiacetal with one alkoxy group and one hydroxyl group linked to the former carbonyl carbon. It's an addition process, and one thing to notice at this point is that it's redox neutral. We started with a ketone or aldehyde in the plus two oxidation state at the carbonyl carbon, and the hemiacetal and the acetal that we'll see in the next video also has an oxidation state of plus two at the central carbon. It's purely an addition process. Now the hemiacetal contains a hydroxyl group, and this has the potential to act as a leaving group. This is particularly true under acidic conditions, because if we could protonate this oxygen, that would turn this group into H2O+, potentially enabling the loss of water as a leaving group. That's where we're going to pick up in the next video with the synthesis of acetals.